everybody flooding in. How is everybody doing? We have something very special today. If you read the title of the stream, what are we doing today, chat? What are we doing today? I've mentioned it multiple times. I'm going to quiz you guys. I'm not going to tell you guys what I'm doing. What are we doing today? What are we doing? Somebody please explain. The sniffer, the Disney sniffer conspiracy theory. It is a theory concocted and crafted by Joe Bartolozzi with the help of like some of my chatters eight months ago, probably longer than that. We're going to give a quick rundown before I get into the presentation. Uh, about a year ago, uh, I was on stream uh, making up conspiracy theories with my chat, one of which was the Disney sniffer conspiracy theory. Most of the theories that we came up were pretty stupid, but this one is very serious. Now, some of you are looking at this and you're saying to yourself, Joe, this looks so unprofessional. Your tie isn't tied. I know how to tie my tie. Do you guys want a little tie lesson before we get into this? You might be saying to yourself, this is, this looks like a school PowerPoint. It is, okay? It's a school fucking PowerPoint. I made a 22 slide presentation for you guys on why the Disney sniffer exists and all this other shit, okay? I spent two hours on this, okay? I'm not lying. I have sources for this conspiracy theory. This is serious. Fuck. Let's learn how to tie a tie with Joe Bart. Before we get in, a little quick tips and tricks from the Bart man. Then you're gonna go around the loop. Fuck, it's caught on my goddamn headset. It's in my headset. Hold up, hold up. Fucking shit. Fuck! God fucking damn it. God fucking damn it. You put the small end in the back. You go the big end over. You go the big end around. The big... The big end around in pizzazz, you got a fucking tie. Ah! Okay, I'm not reading any donos until I'm done this, but I will thank everybody after. The Disney Sniffer by Joe Bartolozzi. Hold up. <laughs> ben, just, just, I, I know, okay? Before you even say this looks like a shit presentation, I know. Should I add music? Should we have music in the background? Fuck, should we have music? This is way too dramatic. I need something that's like not too much. X-Files music, that's definitely copyrighted. Editors, cut this out. This is not going into the YouTube part, right? The YouTube has to be fucking seamless. Needs to be a great one, right? Okay? The Disney Sniffer by Joe Bartolozzi. <laughs> Background! Walt Disney. 1909 to 1966. Lived a pretty short life, but during his life, he accomplished many things. One of which is being the founder of Disney. I know. I know, chat. Astonishing. Astonishing. He created the iconic Mickey Mouse. After success in the cartoon, animation, and movie industry, Walt set his eyes on building a theme park. Disney World and Disneyland. Their own government. Many have heard that Disney World is so large that it even has its own government. This is a quote here. The Disney World Resort in Central Florida consists of four theme parks, countless hotels, water parks, golf courses, a shopping and nightlife, di nightlife district, and even its own public transit system. But Disney World isn't just a resort. It's its own government. That's the source right there, the New, New Republic, if anybody doesn't believe me here. Reedy Creek Improvement District is the formal name for the land on which the magic happens, meaning that the Reedy Creek Improvement District is what it used to be before Disney World. Make sense? What was a strict man? Walt basically had an entire empire under his legal control. This coupled with the fact that he was notably a strict man led to an almost dictator-like ruling over the park's workers. Quote here, Walt Disney was also cruel and controlling to his employees, terrorizing them with humiliating dressing down. A dressing down is a severe reprimand. So I'm just giving you a little background on how Walt is as a person, okay? Walt Disney, a very ruling dictatorship-esque man. He was above everyone else, not even close. Nowhere near a democracy, he was the man that ran the park. Disney even once kicked out his own brother, Roy, out of a meeting for, re for recommending different music for the park, saying, go back down and keep the books to his own brother. Just shows you how strict of a man this guy was. Walt Disney ruled Disney with an iron fist. Disney workers follow many, many rules. Okay, that's cut off by my face cam, that doesn't fucking matter. Some rules that most people know. No visible tattoos, okay? They can't eat on the job, that's very known. They can't say the phrase, I don't know. They must always be in character. They can never break character, that's something that's just widely known by a lot of people if they've ever been to Disney. 
a lot of people fuck with the characters trying to make them break character, and they won't. Uh, and they can't point. They cannot point. They have to do a two-finger gesture. These are these are just some some base ground rules to show how Walt's kind of very specific on what he likes in his park. You know what I mean? Nothing nothing too odd about this. A bit weird that he would say, "Oh, you have to do a two-finger gesture," but you know, nothing too out of the ordinary here. But here's a rule that stands out to me at the Walt Disney World Park. Something that seems normal at first. Here's a quote here. Cast members must turn in their character costumes at the end of their shift, and those with regular uniforms aren't allowed to wear them for personal use. Seems normal at first, right? Why would they allow their employees to take uh, costumes that are worth a lot of money home, especially if they don't have many extra pairs of them in case something goes wrong? But now we're getting more in-depth into that, into that rule. Disney workers not only have to wear and return company uniforms, they also have to wear and return employee underwear. That's weird, right? That's something that you wouldn't expect. When have you ever heard of employee underwear and it, it, it being a rule that they must wear them? Disney and the Teamsters Union have a tentative agreement to assign workers individual undergarments by the Los Angeles Times. That's a quote from there. Many of the characters must wear Disney-issued jock straps, tights, or bike shorts underneath their costumes. Each night, they turn in their undergarments. So they wear them for the day, they pick them up, they put them on, they wear them for the day, and they return them, okay? With the rest of their costume before going home, then they pick up a different set the next day, right? A humble question. How do they know? How would they know if the employees wear the employee underwear? Walt was a very strict man, with every rule that he ever emplaced into Disney World, you would assume that strictness would carry on into the undergarment rule, right? Every other rule is, is, is wildly enforced to the point where if you mess up even a few times, you're fired. So even though he's no longer, no longer living, the rules that are in place and, and the strictness that is in place are still followed. Meaning the underwear rule must also be strictly followed. To find out the answers, we must first look at what they can't do. Okay, to see if, if if the the workers are wearing the employee assigned underwear. What's stopping them? What's stopping them from wearing their own underwear during the day and not wearing the employee issued underwear? You know what I mean? How are they gonna know uh, who's doing what? Right? They're never gonna know. Uh, they can't watch the Disney workers change. Right? That would be illegal. They cannot make the Disney workers show that they are wearing the underwear. That's kind of in the in the wild range here. That could be considered illegal if non-consensual. You know what I mean? They can, okay, don't look at the pictures yet. <laughs> so what can they do? They can ex they can <laughs> So what can they do? They can in they can inspect the underwear when it's returned. That's the only thing they can do, right? Cuz they can't spy on them while they're putting the employee underwear on, and they can't watch them take it off. They only can get it when it's returned, and they have no way of knowing whether or not they wore their own underwear or the employee underwear unless they inspect it. However, just looking at the underwear would not tell if the workers followed the rules. Unless, unless there were noticeable stains like feces, blood, and urine, okay? These are some examples. These are, these are a fresh pair. Nothing wrong in the middle here, but you know. And nevertheless, my point is, if there's noticeable markings, then they would know, okay, the employee wore the underwear today. But if there's not, if there's not noticeable markings, how would they know? And here's a key piece of info. Disney World and Disneyland are both set in hot areas. Orlando, Florida in Disney World, and Anaheim, California in Disneyland. Here's uh, a temperature graph that I uh, researched um, showcasing the average temperature of every month throughout the year in Orlando, Florida, and uh, Anaheim, California. As you can see, um, generally speaking, the coldest it ever gets in Orlando is about 71 degrees Fahrenheit average. I mean, obviously, there's some days where it's colder, but in broad, it's a very hot state. And, and you know, Anaheim's Anaheim's a bit cooler, but consecutively as well, uh, it, it, it's a hot area to be in, right? The workers are outside, and, and, and they're just out in the heat in Florida and, and, and Anaheim, California. Another key piece of info, Disney World and Disneyland are both humid, right? This is a humidity graph of every month showing that the humidity levels are very high in both Anaheim, California and Orlando. Well, this is Los Angeles. Who gives a fuck? It's Los Angeles. Humidity graphs here 
showing about 80% humidity for the peak summer months and in even even during the winter months pretty high humidity around 50-60%, right? Going back to previous info, they cannot spy on the workers. They can't implement cameras. They can't watch them change. And they can't ask them to show that they're wearing the employee underwear. So what does a hot and humid environment, the information that I just showed you, do to a person? This is a question for my chat, even though you could just see the answer. What does it, what does it do? Sweat. Sweat. Yes, sweat. Thank you. Okay, that was my key piece of info in showing you these slides back here. Is to show that everybody sweats. Okay, so what does this mean? Disney World is strict about every rule they have in place since the formation of Disney World and Disneyland, they must be strict about employee underwear, right? They're, if they're strict about every other rule, they must be strict about, about the underwear rule as well. And if the only way they can know for certain if someone is wearing the underwear legally is from the smell because everybody sweats, then that must mean that there is an individual who smells the underwear after it is returned. For Walt Disney's ideologies to be in place, for his rules to be strict, they need to know if someone wore the underwear. And they can't tell 100% of the time if somebody wore it based on the look. I mean, there are the times that they can if somebody pissed themselves or there's a little racing stripe or something. You know what I mean? But every time someone wears that underwear outside, dressed as, uh, who, uh, name Disney characters, Mickey, uh, Minnie, Donald Duck, uh, Cinderella, Anytime they're they're dressed as them for eight hours on end in Disney World outside where it's a humid and hot environment They're sweating and that sweat is smellable, which means The Disney sniffer exists the only question that remains Who is the Disney sniffer it may at one at one point have been Walt Disney himself Okay, it may have I can't discredit that. I, I, well, I have no way of knowing. Walt is dead, though. Walt Disney is dead. And no, 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 no. Before anybody tries to give me that, that dumb conspiracy theory that Walt Disney is still alive and they froze his body and he's rejuvenated and he's hiding somewhere in Cuba or something like that. No. So someone else must be the Disney sniffer. But who? Such an important role in maintaining order and discipline amongst workers. It must be somebody Walt would trust. It's been in front of us this whole time. Look, look, look at all these photos. Mickey, the right hand man, Michael Theodore Mal. It's been here the whole time and we never knew. Walt's right hand man. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna just do a quiet, a quiet showcasing of this real quick. Okay. Michael made Walt famous. Michael was there the entire way through Walt's success. Weird, right? Michael's one of the most recognized characters in the world and the most in Disney, okay? And here's, here's a little fact about mice. Here's a little fact about mice. Mice have a good sense of smell. So good that they are suspicious of anything that smells a little too fresh. They don't like places that are too clean. They are in search of crumbs and, and a little clutter. A mouse is the perfect candidate for the Disney sniffer. Famous quote from one of Walt's earliest and most popular films, Mary Poppins. Everybody's seen Mary Poppins. It's one of his films that brought him into success. A famous quote from Mary Poppins is, why do you, why do you always complicate things that are really quite simple? It's been in plain sight this whole time. But what would Mickey look like? What would real life Mickey Mouse look like, right? Like these are, all, all the sightings of Michael Theodore Mouse are either through cartoons or inaccurate costumes that people wear of him. So what would Mickey, Michael Theodore Mouse, the Disney sniffer really look like? Because these are not accurate depictions of Michael Theodore Mouse. These are some artist depictions. Um, I would say, I would say the third one is more so what I would resonate with, with the real life Mickey, the real life Disney sniffer looking like, right? Uh, obviously the one all the way on the left is kind of terrifying, but number three is, is kind of resonating with me. Like, like a slightly above average looking mouse or above average tall. Like that's a tiny mouse. That looks like literally a mouse in a Mickey costume or a gerbil or something. This looks like the real Mickey, okay? Now, I, I do have to, I do have to have a, a slight message here. There is a chance that it's another mouse in the Disney realm, okay? It might not be Mickey. Mickey might be dead, okay? Which, in which case, there, there, there has to be another one. And here's, here's some candidates. Remy the rat. I know he's not really a mouse, but a rat nevertheless. Here's a kind of, uh, a real life image of Remy the rat. I think that's actually a possum, but it kind of looks like Remy the rat, okay? Then you have, uh, I think this is Jack and Gus Gus from, from Cinderella. And then, who is this fuck? Uh, 
Oh my god, what is his name? Uh, Feeble Malko- Feeble, uh, Feeble Mouskowitz. Feeble Mouskowitz. Not Speedy Gonzalez, right? So these are the other candidates. In conclusion, Mickey Mouse, aka Michael Theodore Mouse, does exist. He smells the underwear of Disney employees to make sure that they are wearing the employee underwear. And he also seemingly lives in the depths of Disney, right? We've never seen him before, but we know he exists. So he has to be in, in hiding. Okay, and probably in a dark room right now sniffing the underwear as we speak. These are my sources. Now do a G Fuel ad. I'm not doing a G Fuel ad. I will see you guys then. We're going to rate it 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.